Thank yeah. you for having me, Mike, into Wait. the studio. And Wait, what's today? Okay. It's Wednesday. I wish it was Thursday. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I only drink on Thursdays. Just playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that being said, we'd like to welcome our guest, Katie Spalding, in studio. Um, by the way, we're live, Katie. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that's the way we just jump right into this. Yes. Um, well, I was going to take a drink, and Let I didn't even that. do it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, you know, got to start the uh, show with a little vodka and cran, the drink of a man. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, if Katie, we got you. Drunk. What? What happened? I'm, no, I'm just saying if it gets you drunk, then, you know. Oh, well. Bottoms no. up. Yeah, I it's mean, for everyone. It doesn't get me drunk. I just drink it because it tastes good. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like, I like that cranberry with the apple. The crayon apple. The crayon apple? I don't think I've tried that one yet. Oh, get it. Yeah. Like the ocean spray? It tastes well, very similar. It's just a little a little something extra. Oh. You've it, had it. It's been in your fridge. The crayon apple? <laughs> I've seen it, yes. More uh, than once, I promise. Oh, well, I don't doubt it. I mean, a, a jug of cranberry juice stays in there for like the same jug for like five months. That's, I don't know. No. That's not true. You guys go Sometimes. through cranberry juice. You and your daughter go through cranberry juice. Uh, like, it, it's unreal. Uh, it's ba- it's more her than it is me, I guess. Until you have vodka. Then it's all you. Damn it. Now I wish the quiz would have been on cranberry juice that I've prepared today. <laughs> Should have been. I am. Should have been, could have been. Anticipating <laughs> the content of today's trivia. <laughs> Um, I honestly forgot what it was, but we'll find out later on in the show. <laughs> so we'll all be surprised. <laughs> yes, nice. we will. Nice. All right. So today in studio, we've got Miss Katie Spalding, realtor. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, what is the difference in like, uh, cause it says you're a residential real estate broker. Okay. Right. Is there, is there a, di- a difference between that and just a realtor? <clears throat> like, some people like myself don't really pay attention to what's a broker and what's a realtor, you know. Right, so. right. So, realtor, and it's, it's not realtor, it's realtor. Everyone says it wrong, including myself sometimes. That is an affiliation with a national group that has an ethics committee behind it uh, to, to provide a level of service and value and ethics to our clients. So most brokers who have passed the real estate license do affiliate themselves with the national, the state, and the local Realtor Association. So yes, you want to be a Realtor in this area, but it's a separate designation. A Realtor, Tour. not a Realtor. 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 Everybody says it different. <laughs> it's uh, real yeah. tour, it's Maybe it's a R-E-A-L, southern thing. R E L, not R E L A T O R. Yeah, yeah. I'm a real Thor. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> you sound strong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't wear his Fa Thor shirt today. <laughs> yeah, I wore that one the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Catch that on last week's episode of Hammered Kids. Yeah, so um, so Katie, what's going on? So awesome. I know, uh, you know, a few episodes back we had a realtor, a realtor, yes, a realtor on, and uh, this is going to fuck You're me up so on the show. Yeah. Doing it right. Right. <laughs> this name I'm is thinking about how to pronounce this drink. word. Two syllables. Um, it's two real syllables. Tour. <laughs> yes, real <tour>. Good job. <laughs> This is going to be, this is, my, my leg muscle feels real tore after today's <laughs> leg workout. Is that right? Yeah. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. Um, so where was I at? Oh my God. I just went off on a tangent and uh, yeah. So what's going on? Uh, we had an agent on a couple of week, a uh, couple of shows ago and he came on, gave us his uh, 
opinions on how the market is, you know, yeah. these days. And um, let's get your opinion. Like, what do you think? C R A Z Y, a thousand times over. So let me give you a little bit of background about myself, and and that might help you in my perspective. Yeah, sure. Tell us. Bringing bringing my perspective to the table over here. So. Um, Back in 1997, I started out in my real estate experience as a leasing consultant at a luxury multifamily uh, apartment community, right? And I was 21 years old, um, you know, coming from the restaurant industry. So I knew how to give good customer service, but I knew nothing about sales. So I started taking this um, course to receive my NALP designation. I'm not going to tell you about this. NALP designation. No, and you have to tell us what NALP National stands National Apartment for. Leasing Professional Thank you designation. Very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they taught me something that was super valuable that I've been able to carry on through my whole life. It is how to ask people the correct questions to get them actively thinking, um, verbally saying how they feel. Um, and being able to be good decision makers. A lot of people are not taught, especially in um, school or by their parents, how to make decisions. And when adults are trying to find housing, whether it's apartment or homes, they're like, uh, where do I start? I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. So I learned how to ask the correct questions to get them actively thinking about their wants and needs. And it got me hooked right away. Because then I got to see other people's lifestyles and how they lived, not just the, you know, the family that I grew up in. I got to see what's important to other people. And um, so after, after years of doing that, I uh, ventured out um, to manage 200 single-family homes in Johnson County and started to learn how investors and um landlords use real estate as an investment tool. I did not understand, you know, early on in my early 20s that real estate was an investment. I just thought it was a fun place. Let's do a big walk-in closet, all the feels and the emotions. But I didn't really understand the financial background until I managed single family homes. So lots of time in property management and um, was charged with the option to get my real estate broker's license um, as uh, the assistant manager in uh, my, my apartment community um, profession. And I said, well, I'm never going to sell a home. I just really enjoy doing what I'm doing. And they said, no, get it anyway. You might, you might use it down the road. So took the test, uh, passed it, and sat on it for a while. So fast forward, when I started sales, um, I worked exclusively as a buyer's agent representing buyers only. And then after about four years, switched it and worked for sellers exclusively. And I really feel that that strategy in starting my sales career was really important because I got to uh, dive deep um, into both sides of the transaction. And it took me to an expert level very quickly. So uh, to interrupt you right there, I didn't yeah. even know that was an option for realtors, that you could be a buyer or a seller's agent. Yes. I, did, I thought you did them both, uh, like it was a two-way street for both. Guess not. No. Nope. You know, you learn nope. something on Hammered every episode. No, nope. absolutely. Yeah. We, we can pick and choose our clients as we wish. And mm. if we want to only represent sellers or only represent buyers, we are at 100% liberty to do so. So what's the less stressful, sellers so, or buyers? Oh, God, they're both. They're both, really? They're both oh, stressful. come on. One's got to be In like less. In today's market, buyers are ridiculously stressful. And I'm uh, so thankful that I'm leading my business now with sellers. Very fortunate that most of my business is with sellers in this market because buyers are losing, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, c I can sell a home in a hot minute right now, but it's very difficult for even the most seasoned um, agents to secure a home for buyers right now. Yeah, like yeah. Where, where are all these sellers yeah. living after they sell their homes? Where are they going? Yeah, most, yeah, I mean. yeah, most sellers that are selling right now are moving away from the Triangle area mm -hmm. um, because it is very difficult to secure a home, to secure a home here. Um, 
interest rates are fantastic, but that doesn't mean you're going to win an offer. We are mm-hmm. seeing um, homes go well, well, well over asking and very high due diligence fees. Um, and I can review that term. You want me to review that term with you? Due diligence. Yeah, tell us some, but remind us. I think um, (laughs) our last realtor explained due diligence to us, but let's hear it in your words. Yes, so it's your initial skin in the game. It is saying, seller, I am going to cut this check to you as soon as you sign this contract and deliver it over to you. It is yours to keep. And shall I back away from the contract? You have that money forever, right? If the buyer gets to the closing table, they are credited back that due diligence fee that they gave the seller towards that purchase price. But if they back out, they will not get that money at any given point in time. Um, so we are seeing at the $500,000, $600,000 price point, due diligence fees given to the seller anywhere between Fifty and a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my God! Yeah. Who are these people giving up due diligence money like this, that? These people. How's the little man like me supposed right? to compete with you, that? You can't compete. So Ugh. these people are coming. We are being dubbed as a Zoom town right now. Um, what does that mean? That means that people from the South, the North, and the West who are able to work remotely, and about fifty-six percent of Employees now, workers, are able to work virtual from their home. The Triangle area is a desirable place on all fronts to live. Education, um, just a a great um, lifestyle with with lots of, you know, still affordable compared to the rest of the um, country. But it's it's a great place to live um, for lots of different people. They're coming in. And they are paying cash. They are paying cash from the sale of of their other home wherever they lived before. Well, it's basically like these people coming from like New York, you know, New York, uh, maybe some California mixed in there, maybe some Illinois mixed in there. All these, most of the, those are the three big ones. And these people are seeing these houses going for three hundred to three fifty, and they're like, "Oh my God, that's chump change." Let me got it. Put the pillows up and get the couch change out. You know, I mean, they they don't yeah. see these houses as expensive like we do. Exactly. We see our prices, and uh, me personally, I'm like, oh my god, I can't afford a freaking eighteen hundred dollar a month mortgage by myself. Exactly. And these me people either. From, yeah, these people from <laughs> New York, they're like, oh god, that's chump change. I mean, no problem. Let's get it. Yeah, and cash yeah. is king in real estate. Cash is king in real estate, and the more the more money you put down in due diligence, that that shows the seller that you are a very serious buyer, and you are not backing out. You're yeah. not backing out um, because that is a lot of money to risk. So, you know, I put a home under contract recently, uh, within the week, and we saw a fifteen thousand dollar due diligence on a um, home right under $200,000. So think about the type of buyer that's going to buy a $200,000 home. So, so essentially, basically, (laughs) essentially, basically, (laughs) if I'm working with a buyer, okay, and we're seeing $15,000 in due diligence, okay, that's not including closing costs that the buyers can have to come to the table with. That's not including the payments to get an inspection on the Mm -hmm. house because you want to have it inspected, right? Um, so what is an agent to do? Really like say, okay, first time home buyer, I need to see your bank account and see that you've got 20 grand in cash sitting there before I waste my time to show you a $200,000 home. That's craziness. Wow, this is disheartening to somebody it like is. me. It well, is. Well, for me, forever. you know, earlier in the year when I was younger and more naive, I'm like, I'm going to buy a house this year, right? I'm ready. But I'm like, it's it's just me. I would be the only person footing the bill for this house. Where am I going to get $20,000? Yeah. Like, that's not just hiding under my mattress. My company does not pay me that. Right. It would take me five years to save that if I live exclusively on ramen noodles. Right. So, you know, it. It makes sense to me how families are able to make this happen, especially coming from high-income areas, Washington, D.C., and New York. Mm -hmm. And they're like, wow, that's nothing. I just sold my house in D.C. for $750,000. So here, 
You Let me pay cash. It. It's there. I'll pay cash for my house in like, North Carolina. <laughs> I've been renting my apartment for, you know, I've been renting apartments for like 10 years now. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I'm never going to save that. So it's yeah. just like this endless, vicious cycle of, I guess I'm just going to rent forever, especially here it now. Does. Yeah, it does. It does feel like that for a lot of buyers. And it's, it's frustrating for us as agents because we want it for you guys just as bad as you want it. Um, but the market is not, is not changing anytime soon. Now, I don't have a magic ball and I don't know what's going to happen five years from now, but we are, you know, there's, there's approximately 5,000 uh, new movers into the Triangle area every month, and that's up from 12% of last year, and we're not seeing it go down. I mean, Apple's got the first East Coast campus, coming to RTP in Wake County um, soon, and that's going to bring three more thousand positions um, to our area, and all those people are going to be very well paid. Um, I don't remember what the starting salary was. I think it was like $110,000 for each one of those employees, like starting. Oh, God. So I need to going, go apply. I know. <laughs> You're right. What Time can I for do a around? career change. Yeah. <laughs> so you said 15%. Um, of new growth in the Triangle area, mm-hmm. you said monthly? It's a 12% um, increase in in um, new moves uh, from last year. Okay. So wow. 12% more people are buying homes here in the Triangle right now over last year's numbers. Yeah. And so that means these are people who have already lived in Raleigh, including people who are coming in from other Correct. areas. And okay. that's a month. Mm-hmm. That's wow. a month. So it's a ton of transactions going on. Um, our market, though, if we can get into a little bit more data, is so skewed right now. So a balanced real estate market between buyers and sellers, right, is six months. We are sitting right now at one half of a month. That means if there's no more listings coming on the market, no brand brand new listings coming on the market, it would take 15 days for buyers that are actively pre-qualified and looking for homes right now, only 15 days and all those homes listed will be under contract. We will be completely dry to the bone in 15 days if there's no active homes going on the market. That's a half a month of inventory and a balanced market is six months. I'm crying. I need a drink. What do you mean um, by a balanced, (laughs) by a balanced market? Can you explain that? Yeah, it's a fair market between buyers and sellers. It means there's enough sellers that are sufficient and including new construction to feed the buyer's needs. So, if you were to if you were to get pre qualified and start looking with, for a home, you would be under contract within six months, and every home would be under contract within six months of the given inventory. We're at half a month, so if there's no new listings, everything would be swooped up in fifteen days. Like if the MLS just stopped and said we're not accepting anymore, mm-hmm. all the homes would be under contract in fifteen days. So there's none of these. Uh... Um, people listing their homes and, and the houses are staying on the MLS for like over 90 days because, I mean, back when I was buying of, yeah. houses before, I sold a house, took forever to sell it. And it was a nice house, yep. you know, um, took uh, three months to sell a house one time. So you're saying that's we, yeah. obsolete now. It Absolute, doesn't happen. Completely obsolete. I mean, it would have to be a crazy situation with like, I mean, I, I don't I don't even know. Like I'd have to walk in and the vibes would be so so bad like or like crazy that everybody would just walk out like it, it would have to be crazy <laughs> like it smelled like death <laughs> yeah like and exactly. their that family was... was murdered in here <laughs> exactly. and they hung puppies in the dining room and their little oh. souls are still running through it like you can <laughs> oh, see them oh god i can sell everything and but that <laughs> it would still probably sell it some probably poor would bastard sell. would sell it so yeah. it would be like that's fine just just call in a shaman it'll be fine it'll be fine <laughs> right <laughs> twenty thousand dollars due diligence just tell me where to sign so i mean that that's kind of crazy so okay do you see this changing? I mean, I know you said it's hard to forecast it, right. um, but I've heard, from, um, and the last person we had, uh, it's in the realtor market, he's, he was like, these prices will never go down. 
that this is where it is. This particular area is definitely, the triangle is definitely a hot spot. I do not see it changing in this particular area. Other areas of the country might even out some. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it, it, it fluctuates on, um, on interest rates as well. So, you know, that's so government related and I don't watch the news. Yeah. Um, but it it's not it's just the the government is not predictable um enough for me to bank my advice to clients on that so i've been telling my clients for a long 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 time start investing in real estate at a young age it's a long haul investment so even if you are a first time home buyer like 5 years ago i'd say to my first time home buyers this isn't your forever home start somewhere you might live here six months and hate it, but sell it after two years and you've got 10, 20 grand of equity. Mm -hmm. And then you can put that down on something that you like better. But now you've got 50 grand of equity in a house that you just bought three years ago. Most people. Uh, but or, then you or, can't buy. Or a lot more. <laughs> or a lot more. And no new yeah. houses to move into. So congratulations. You have $170,000 in equity and you're still living under a bridge. <laughs> exactly. So we are yeah. seeing about 103% of, uh, of offer price. Um, uh, when you look at, okay, so if a home is listed at a certain number, right, we're seeing 103% given typically in Wake County. And a lot of times we're seeing that the buyer is giving the seller an option to rent back that home after closing in order for them to secure their next home. So they tip, the buyer owns the home now, but they're letting the sellers live in there longer until they find something. They find something. Is that... That's nice. New? Like that that sounds like something that had to have been dreamed up in the last like five years. It's kinda new and I don't like it at all. That's I don't like it at What's all. What's why don't you like it? What's the drawback? Um, I, I, I just I just think that the newness the new flavor of having a new home and not being able to live in it mm -hmm. is a weird reflection on the agent. Mm. So I don't want somebody coming to me like, oh, yeah, Katie sold me this incredible home. But guess what? We don't even get to live in it. Well, there's got to be. That's weird. You there, know what I mean? Yeah. That's just weird. Well, there's got to be a separate contract, though, that, that they yeah. sign. Because, I mean. A, there's an addendum that goes with it. And then everybody's agreeable. All the parties are agreeable. It's just a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's got to be, like, something in there about fucking the house up. Like, you know, if you're, if you're renting it out from the new buyer and then you go in there and, like. To have a party and tear cabinets out, you know, break windows or, you know. Well, then you would pay that the, back, you know. That's yeah. that's me fucking up my apartment and someone goes in after I move out. They're going to be like, absolutely not. And then, you know, I get taken to court. I'm sure the exact same thing applies in this yeah. situation. Yeah. yeah, I would yeah. double up but on insurance on both parties. You, you got to be like, you got to be super nice to do that as a, as the buyer. Desperate. You have to be. No, desperate. well, the buyer wouldn't be desperate, would he? The renters would. Well, the buyer no. may be in a situation to where. A, to secure a home, so to secure a home in the neighborhood that they want, they're oh. willing to give up that home for right. a while. Just oh. to have their name on it so they have somewhere to Eventually. live when maybe they're coming from upstate New York. No one's buying houses in Rochester. So it's going to take them yeah. three months to sell their house. At least they, they have their home and someone paying into it so they're not paying two mortgages for well, three months. This whole situation reeks of dual desperation. you got buyers desperate to secure a house. Then you've got renters the former homeowners desperate to find another place, which they can't, so they need to fall back on this, their former house to rent. I mean, I honestly, Dual I just think it's shameful all the way around that this is kind of what it's come to in the area. You know, everybody's mm. kind of homeless at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much is a box on Glenwood going for these days? Ooh, yeah, so <laughs> like seven fifty eight. Yeah. I mean, but they got to What be kind pretty. of box are we talking? Because if it's like <laughs> a two by fours, I mean, we're talking upwards of 300,000 no, right now. I'm talking like a couple of toilet like, paper boxes. I, I mean, 
maybe I don't know. Maybe line them with some trash bags, keep them waterproof. Mm. You know. <laughs> That's a hard sell. I don't know. It's not uh, ideal, but you know, very oh, little yeah. in terms of storage space. But yeah, it's definitely not ideal. It's, it's yeah. a fixer upper. I showed a few nice ones a couple weekends ago to a, um, an out of state uh, couple that's coming in, and they were like sev- like seven fifty, and it was right around Cameron Village. Got you know where Cup of Joe is, not far from there, right around the corner from Cup of Joe. Mm-hmm. So, and they were they were nice. I would I would definitely love it them myself. But um, what are some other good stats that I can share with you guys? Well, um, I'm I'm looking at your Facebook page. Oh and, boy! Um, oh boy! Don't go too far back. Um, oh, what am I? What am I gonna find? <laughs> well, I do know that you're into like uh, working out and stuff. I uh, am. I, see I you, am. Uh, I'm, but uh, I'm sorry. I'm let, let me touch on this, and then we'll get back to your swollen, you know, throwing oh up, boy. throwing up weights. So um, we talked off air about some of these prices for some of these homes. And these price points are like uh, prior 2020 price points, you know, like realistic price points, stuff that you can look at for these houses. Like, okay, I can afford that. But I'm also keeping in mind where they're located. You know, Mm -hmm. Clayton, North Carolina, it's always been a place you can get a cheaper home, I guess, with some land and, you know. Yep. But you've got like some listed 175 all the way up to 360, and the one for 360 looks like a like a plantation almost, mm-hmm. but it's not a plantation. It's a ni- nice house. Mm-hmm. So um, how are these ho- homes uh, affordable like this out there? Mm-hmm. Like I mean, this house right here, I can't see the specs on it, but it's 175 thousand, and it looks like in Raleigh this house would be like 250. Two bedrooms, one bathroom, hundred and yeah, I'm sorry, one thousand square feet ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, yeah, <laughs> right. right, right. I know which one you're talking about. That's a townhome. Um, yeah, in Raleigh, depending on the location, that would be closer to two fifty, two sixty. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Clayton, anywhere from one seventy five, and then with this market. Of course, over asking. So that that house is, is listed for one seventy five, but it's going to sell for like two twenty. That house Probably. is under contract currently. I'm not. Oh, is it? Terms because we are we are officially under contract. Oh, just that give is, me a hint. Hmm, just give me a hint. Am I, I am I right? Not. Is it like above two twenty? <laughs> Wink your right eye I'm if not. I'm right. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, a lot of these, I mean, the average, let's see, average price point in Clayton right now is like the uh, 360 in a lot of neighborhoods. There's a lot of 360s coming up. Really? Um, yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Um, in Raleigh, it's closer. It, it in Raleigh, it was like 360, 370. Now it's like 420 for Wake County mm. in overall. But there's a lot of neighborhoods that were built 15, 20 years ago in Clayton, and they're like the 350, 370 now. And they're the they're the you know three bedroom, two and a half bath with the bonus room, two car garage. In the neighborhood, maybe a swimming pool, maybe not. You know, nothing custom or super glamorous. Mm-hmm. So three fifty is the new two fifty. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. You got it right. Yeah. You got it right. Yeah. Uh, well, well, somebody needs to tell the people that pay our wages that they need to like give us that difference. It ain't gonna. <laughs> so happen. we can buy houses. It's not gonna happen. You know, I wanted a forever home, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. I mean, when I moved in this house, I knew it wasn't going to be my forever home. Um, My house before this was actually a lot bigger and nicer and had lots of upgrades, but it was in Durham in a shitty subdivision that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. So I sold it, moved here, much smaller house, and now I'm like, why? (laughs) Why did I do this? I mean, uh, but now I'm in a situation where I'm like, shit, I'm stuck. I don't know if this is ever going to change. Yeah, you may be stuck for a little bit. It's okay. Oh, come on, Katie, you're we'll supposed to out. give me like a fist pump and you're supposed to say, rah, rah, you got this. You know, <laughs> well, don't don't feel like that. You're going to sell this and you're going to move into your forever home in the you next do year. you got this. It's uh, just uh, not going to be in the next 15 to years. 18 months. So oh. the direction I would normally put you in, okay, if, uh, you, were, if you were my client and okay. you don't love this home, 
I would say, okay, let's just keep paying this. The market's going to go up. We're going to, in the meantime, buy some land, and we're going to build your forever home, okay? Mm -hmm. But the prices of material costs right now are off the charts. They have spiked so high, and now there's, you know, lack of new construction inventory, and all the builders are scraping for those materials. Mm -hmm. You, right, as a little measly, you know, hire your home builder, you're not going to be able to get the lumber. Um, I have a crazy story. So I have a home under contract in Holly Springs right now. It's a townhome. They delivered the brick to put on the facing of the, just, just the front of the home. Because of the lack of building supplies right now, they delivered the brick in two batches. Well, the coloring of the brick from one week to another week is way off. One is a peachy pink, one is a burnt orange brown. So you can see where the the mason stopped and put the new batch right on top. Oh, <laughs> so wow. there's like a line. So they're having to take it all down and start all over again. But they didn't yeah. see that they when they were doing even, it. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be a point where you're like, okay, I think the homeowner's not going to like this two different tones of colors. Yeah. But, but let's put it on anyway. The homeowner doesn't have a choice at this point. They need to live somewhere, aesthetics yeah. aside. so well, It's a great company. We yeah. looked at it. They agreed with us. They said, we're going to take it all down. Wait for two. I, th- I forgot what they're called. They're not bundles. It's, it's a strange word for the pallets of brick. It's a, it's a weird word. I, I don't remember. But... They're going to wait for two to be delivered at the same time so they know that they're in the kiln on the same day, you know, matchy-matchy, and it all look right. So they're fixing it for us. But that's, I mean, the, so normally, I would, let's get back. So normally I would tell you, buy a piece of land, we're going to build your forever home. You're going to be super happy forever. But um, with with materials and and lack of supplies of materials to even build that home it's not even the time to do that i mean we can sell you a little plot of land in clayton you want to live in clayton <laughs> i mean clayton is not a bad I area mean, clayton is it's out there. a lot of really but cute clayton is attributes popping. have you partied in clayton lately by oh, the yeah. way you know stephanie lynn and i'm gonna party with her on friday night at lincoln theater oh, oh guess who else is gonna, gonna be there, there. <laughs> Uh, well, you have to come me. say hi. We'll I, I, I think yeah. the table that we got, somebody else got it for me. I get, it's like the second row back, right in the middle. I'm going to be like, eh. I love Stephanie. <laughs> She's one of my favorites. Yeah, we she all was, love uh, Stephanie. She was a great guest on the show. Yeah. And that's a strap of bricks. Strap. A strap. strap. Oh, I think that's what it's bricks. called. Okay. A pallet of bricks is a strap. At least that's what Google says. Okay. So cool. if it's wrong, don't come like no, head hunting me. Well, I'm going to call um, it that. I gotta add to my real estate vocabulary every once in a while. A strap perfect. of bricks. Your straps of brick came in. <laughs> Your house is complete. Congratulations, Clint. Yeah. Um, so I want. Let me ask you this, or I, I'll tell you this first, and you give me your input. Yeah. So um, I recently refinanced my home. I got a two point seven five from a certain lender out there. Yeah. And this same lender calls me yesterday, uh-huh. saying they're going to give me a two point two five. Okay. Isn't that kind of weird? Like, why would the same lender want to lower my interest rate? I mean, they're making less money off that, right? But they, they called me because I'm currently 2.75. And they're like, hey, we just want to reach out to all our current customers and say, hey, we can offer you 2.25 right now. It just come, it, yeah, it seems kind of yeah. weird to me. Uh, they service the transaction. Um, you know, if, if if you kind of start your whole loan over with them all again, mm-hmm. like, I think you do end up paying more in the end. And yeah, because I don't want to do all that. You have to redo everything. Kind of what I was going to ask was, like... That wouldn't be enough for me to go ahead and do that. But yeah. that's just me. Isn't that more in just, like, closing costs and down payments over time, essentially, just to redo it? Well, and then... It's it. That's like you have to go so deep into the numbers to see if it makes sense and and, and get like you know their Excel spreadsheets out. So yeah. I don't know. I, I don't, don't think know. that's enough. I don't I, know if it's enough. I need to look at mine to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I have an investment home that's a little bit higher. But when you first buy an investment home, the interest rates are a little bit higher, and then you can refinance after the. 20% is paid off. So I've paid off the 20%. I probably need to refinance that. 
So, mm. yeah, the lending world works alongside real estate agents, but we're so different. And it's really crucial, and I'm a firm believer that agents should stay agents and lenders should stay lenders, mm -hmm. and that should not cross like, ever. So what do you mean by that? Are lenders trying to sell homes or something? Or like No, it's it's when clients ask me financial questions. Oh, got I say, you. Ah, I don't know. Let's talk to the lender. You're Let's like, oh, switch gears. Phone. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. Because gotcha. it's a lot of stuff to keep up with on both both industries and mm -hmm. I mean it's two separate industries it really is yeah yeah everybody's got different jobs they have to do you know you sell the home and you're like oh let me get them on the phone we got you yeah Lenders. I'm a yeah. big stay in your own lane in fact I've never done my own real estate photography mm -hmm. I don't measure my own homes I have a listing coordinator for my listings I am great at negotiating and communication and dropping the facts with my clients in a very diplomatic but compassionate way, and I stay in that lane. Well, let, <laughs> let's talk about the VA loan. Um, are do you find uh, do you have a lot of clients with VA loans, and do you find uh, clients with VA loans always get in the short end of the stick? When it comes to um, negotiating and... Yes, they do. Yes, they yeah. do. But I actually read on Facebook today that... It, Is it uh, true? If it's it, on Facebook. I don't know. Well... <laughs> oh, my God. Let her finish. Okay. I'm horrible. <laughs> I know. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to take my glasses off. They're fogging up in here. Y'all got, got a heat cranked up for me. <laughs> No, it's the white one. I'm just like. Uh, well, I mean, some I turned it down to 69. I mean, I, it should be cool in here now. Uh, <laughs> It's not. Uh, it's, it's not. not though. It takes okay. a lot to get me warm, and it's it's quite <laughs> it's warm <toasty>. in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I'm just playing. No, so we. I'm. I'm. A, I'm. Uh, you know, connected with a lot of different great groups on Facebook, and you know, it's agents that are collaborating together to help each other in any given market, right? So there's one called Lab Code Agents. That's fantastic. It's like. I don't know, $10,000, 10,000 agents. And one particular gentleman said today, I found what I think may be the key of getting VA offers accepted. And I've got to research and figure it out because I just read it today. I'm not sure. It's find out which listings are funded with VA loans and they will have compassion on VA buyers. Hmm. So go for the homes that are fund currently funded by someone who used a VA loan and they'll be more compassionate. A lot of the general public is like, VA, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, well, I've heard it's also a pain in the ass to deal with VA loans as a seller, you know. Yes, um, yes, the uh, appraisal. Um, restrictions are tighter so like fha usda you know no peeling paint on the exterior of the home so that could be like a handrail going down your front steps um they've just they're they're really protecting their clients so it's a it's a more restrictive appraisal approach um yeah, yeah. but it's but i've done tons of vas in the past and they they work great the only thing I don't like about VAs is there's so much upfront cost for that for that buyer, though. I don't really get it. It's like a lot more. The rates are great, but it's a lot more upfront closing costs. I don't know. I never noticed it. I bought all my homes with VA. So I just, like, my real my real tour would tell me, you know, you got to pay this. I'm like, okay, I don't question anything. Yeah. But I'm, I'm getting beyond that now. I'm questioning everything. That's my motto. I'm going to get a T-shirt that says, question everything. He's just mad because he put in an offer on a house earlier this year, and it was declined. And oh, he's, it, he's under the belief that it's because it was a VA loan. Yeah, and I don't think yeah. that was the case. I think someone just put in a way stronger offer. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was a little discrimination against my VA loan. Thank you. But I can't prove that because we know how the realtors are Nobody's there. Nobody's going to prove that. They are, they are tight-lipped. They can't 
talk about yeah what is it you guys can't talk about what it's it's like so uh, much so so yeah. so much so there's seven protected classes oh um, hold on we're getting bad. good here seven. no we are not talking we are not talking that um yeah so there's a lot to to um fair housing and fair housing if you if you um Ooh, if you violate fair housing in the real estate industry, you could be locked up behind bars with like fifty thousand dollar fine, a hundred thousand dollar fine behind bars. Well, you can you can tell us what the seven uh, classes are. Oh my are, gosh, right? you're gonna quiz me on them. Okay. I just googled it and couldn't find familial, them. Familial, so right? Familial status. So that is kids, not kids, right? Marital okay. and marital status, right? Race. Color, which is different than race. Religion. Oh, my God. You're literally testing me on this right now. Uh-oh. What are you looking at the, me about? Um, color and race. Well, it's, I never agreed with the race thing anyway because we're all the same race. The human race. Well, is there another kind of race that I don't know about besides, like, NASCAR? I, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. Anyway. I feel like you can be a, a race, you can classify yourself as a race, but you're not necessarily the the stereotypical color that falls into that race. Am I, does that sound about right? You're tanner than I am, and your skin is golden beautiful. Right. However, so, we're both white. Yes. But is that so, a race? Yes. Being white is not a race. But. Being in a race is like either being a monkey or a fish or a human. That would be a species, dear. Oh, then how come you always hear human race? The human race. Especially in sci-fi movies. The human. It's not human. It's human. The human. This one has a really hard time pronouncing <laughs> H's. Human. I love it. No, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but anyway. anyway, but, you know, that's, okay. that's kind of what she's going on is, like, you know, you can't <clears throat> choose to not sell me a house just because I am slightly darker than Katie is. I yeah. think that that's the point she's getting at. Anyway, I, I firmly believe that you were not discriminated against. I think your offer was not high enough or your due diligence was not high enough or your earnest money was not high enough or the dates weren't right. There's so many terms to an offer. Um, and it, it's, you don't know what is important to the seller. That's what it is. Hmm. And that's what makes it fair. And that makes perfect sense because the house he put the offer in on was totally empty. It was the the sellers were gone. They needed someone in the house ASAP. So, you know, it made sense to me that they needed a, a quick transaction to mm. alleviate themselves of that mortgage. Yeah, now, pretty much. now I want to look it up. It could be like American Homes for Rent or something. Like oh, cash. I'll see if I can find it later and I'll send it to you and um I'm, I, I don't even talk about it. I'm pissed off about that okay, house. Let's, yeah, it, let's, it had a great shop in the back. It was great. That was really right. the only thing I had going for it. Okay, so Katie, here we go. It is well, emotional. Let, let's talk about race, all right? No, oh, no, 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 So no, 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 a no, group no, no, no. We are going race, in the wrong direction. Race okay. is defined as a group of people identified as distinct from other groups because of supposed physical or genetic traits shared by the group. Humans share the same genetic traits across the board. Right. Walk, talk, feel, taste, touch. Digestive system. Digestive organs, everything. Okay. Reproductive system, everything. Okay. Also, a group of people united or classified together on the basis of common history, nationality, or geographic distribution. The, the Celtic race. Okay. So now we're getting into like breaking up groups of people. But it also. Humans are considered as a group, a race. Okay, thank you. So do we understand this now? Clarification. I don't think there so, was any misunderstanding, but... No, because I just feel like race shouldn't be one of these choices on an application or... or I just I think oh, it's weird. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, but that's why it is Ethnicity protected. should, but race... What should? Ethnicity. Oh, boy. Eth what? Ethnicity. Ethnicity. You know what? This what does ethnicity here. mean? I forgot now. Now that you said that word. That means like <laughs> Evidently, authentic. ethnicity doesn't mean anything because it's not <laughs> a word. Think I think I'm like authentic and 
ethnicity uh, together. That's um, great. <laughs> you know what? If it's not a word, it should be one. It, be. Yeah. it rolled off your tongue too easily. Ethnicity is not a way too much rolls off his tongue. But too think much. about it. I mean, <laughs> one day aliens are going to come from the universe and they're going to come to Earth and want to buy a house. And you know what? You're going to discriminate them because of their race. Can't buy my, can't sell a, that's, sell my house. That's what Katie's saying. Is yeah. like that's protected. It is that's protected. Not, yeah. That's not part of the the selling decision or the buying decision. What if these are evil aliens and we don't want them to buy a house? <sighs> right. I, I think this needs I'm to be in effect. What is careers and it is like <laughs> criminal record on that list? Like uh, no. Oh. Oh, so no. these evil aliens um, have trespassed, they've damaged property, they are being cited for it, now they have a criminal record, now we don't have to sell them a house because of that. Okay, all right, uh, I'll deal with that. So if this cute guy on my shirt comes to the planet Earth, we're going to sell him a house. All right, we got it. You sent him to Keys from Katie. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, see. I like what you did there. We were going to get to that later on, but there you go. Hey, Keys. Yeah, uh, yeah let's move on. We're keys at- from Katie Spalding at gmail.com if you want to buy a house. That's there, it. That's hit it. Up 919-418-4433. There it is, boo. We're going to make okay. a remix of that phone number later. Uh, we'll play it at the end of the podcast. <laughs> All right, so before I started talking about Space Odyssey and, you know, uh, uh, Close Encounters, moving to planet Earth, you were discussing those uh, classes. So we got races. We got we got race. We got color. We got uh, kids. Family status. Yeah. Familial Fam- status. Family uh-huh. status. Okay. Are what what really, are the other ones? Did you re- I hope you looked these up. I'm going to need some assistance. Oh, I did not. And I just I, took my oh. ethics. It's required every two years. I just took it like. Oh, is this like going to. S- like, oh, my God. You're quizzing me. Um, let me think. Hold on. I mean, I'm just going to Are we calling you? Oh, oh I got him right here. Like gender. The FHA Ge- prohibits discrimination yes, on the basis of seven okay. protected classes. Thank we've you. got race. We've got color. We've got religion. Yes. Um, I said those. Yes. We've got national origin. I forgot that one. So I don't see race up here anywhere. Huh? Yeah. That race isn't up here. It says sex, disability, sex, and family yes. status. Disability, family status. Is that seven? That's uh, seven. They recently added two, maybe. Yeah, I don't see anything and about race. And then I guess, race. like, color and race could technically fall into the same category. Technically. Well, we all know how I feel about I race. I need to retake my continuing education, that's all. That's fine. Just a refresher course. You're <laughs> fine. You're fine. <laughs> Or maybe you shouldn't discuss it with two I, people that don't know anything about right, it, actually. Right, right. <laughs> no idiots who are not <laughs> realtors. <laughs> anything. Yes. I Honestly, I love all people. So I really don't have any issues. I do love all people. So. Uh, now, come on. I, I know you've been in situations where you're, like, selling a home or you're actually, um, you got to buy, you're being the buyer's agent, right? Dude, I and, am the best in the world at having short-term relationships. Yeah? So I can be somebody's best friend for a couple of months faking it like or genuine like have you ever met a client that's like oh this dude sucks my average like romantic relationship usually lasts 45 to 60 days which so weirdly mimics the relationship in a real estate transaction yeah (laughs) genuinely (laughs) like wholeheartedly and then i'm like Uh, "Eh." what hold on Forty-five to sixty days is your average romantic relationship. I, I've been single for ten years, so ten years. Yeah, uh, I just, I just put it all aside. So, what are you doing? Are you just, uh, you're a member of any singles groups? Or are you doing like the apps or all oh that? My God. I you am t- not look, you, this is, you know, that's how we veer yeah, off here. I know, I know. Yeah, I am not. I, I, no, I, I have not participated, and I do know Bobcat as well. Okay. Yes, okay. and. Um, I love him dearly as a friend, and he was like, come on, join, let's go, let's go. I was like, I'll show up at the events, but I can't see all that crazy memes about dicks and shit. Like, I oh, you can't... mean like the one I posted last night in probably, the singles group? Probably, probably. Yeah. I can't, that like, that stuff makes, like, twist my stomach. So, like, I can't, I don't know, man. So... I've been hurt too bad or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you a Capricorn? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Pisces, Pisces. Oh, that also makes sense. Okay. 
Now, you can't just say, are you a Capricorn? And she says, no. And then you say, oh, that makes sense. Um, well, Pisces women are very strong. Like, they have to fight a little harder because Pisces as a whole feel differently. They feel harder. They feel... Um, I get more more profoundly. So what I find is women, pr women Pisces protect themselves by putting up this really hard barrier of hardworking, strong, independent female. Completely agree. We don't need no man because we don't need you fucking up our shit that we've worked hard to attain. Completely agree. Because um, you know the moment that Pisces woman gets hurt, like it 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 fucks everything up and and Pisces women don't want to rebuild themselves that way so mm. that's um that's just been my observations about Pisces women yeah and there's Compl nothing wrong with that like continue to protect yourself that way me. so I'm intrigued now <clears throat> 45 to 60 days romantic relationship wow. now <laughs> what do you feel is the problem why are they not exceeding 60 days um is it you get bored with the men? Yeah, there's just nothing uh, more. It's just that's the experience, and there's nothing more beyond that. Huh. I've, I've experienced it all. I know you inside and out. We're good. Bye. Just no click, no I'm fire happy anywhere. With myself. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, when you're so satisfied with what you have built and, and yourself, that it has to be a lot more for me to share my time with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I teach time blocking classes to real estate agents. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? For yeah. you to get on my schedule has got to be wow. So, so I mean, 10 years, you're just having fun. I you am. know, you're just having fun for 10 years, you know, and well, if you have fun, fun, I had fun for like six years, you know, it's, it's building great, you her know? career, yeah. building herself yeah. inside and out, um, you know, and, and yes, that can be fun, but it's also like, you know, you got to do a lot of deep internal trauma work to to overcome you know the shit that you went through to be the strong self-assured yeah. individual that you are today yeah so hats off yeah. to that seriously i'm still working on that thank you hey, kudos yeah. hey you maybe you could be a real real tour i don't want to be a real tour real torah should do it so that's, that's how you say it in spanish real torah i just made that up it's probably we not know right. everyone knows <laughs> everyone knows you made that up so do, do you meet your guys in ATB? Okay, ATB is like the group I created for you I people know. that don't know. I know. Do, do, do you meet them on ATB? Do you swipe I'm on Bumble, Tinder? No, nothing. No. No? I don't no, that's what I'm saying. You I just don't meet date. them out? I don't say. I feel so bad because I break hearts after the 30 uh -huh. to 45 days. I've stopped dating completely. Like, oh, I don't date. Nothing. Ask Bobcat. Ask Stephanie. Oh. It's just, it doesn't even happen. I go out, live my best life, have fun, and you think of the wildest, craziest you know, going yeah. home with everybody, but I go home, right? And I wash my face. Uh -huh. and I love all my kids and I love all my dog and I go to bed all, all by myself. Is that funny? Huh. It's great. I don't though. think that's funny, but I think it's, it's kind of like. Uh, but I have the best time. I mean, but I have the yeah. best time. It's and it's it's a little it's 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 unusual, but it's me. Mm -hmm. You know, people are allowed to be secure in their yeah their. Solitude. Oh no, I get that. Yeah, but I mean, you gotta have some fun out there. Everybody likes to like get crazy every once in a while. Well, that's what you she's know. saying. She's but going I do. out. She's having I a great time. But she says time. she goes home alone. I, will I mean, see you Friday. Okay, can okay. See how much fun I but where's this happening? Some some delineation. I'm just. Here. You can go out and have crazy and have a great fucking time without taking someone home to. Fuck. I okay. If you want to just go ahead and say the words, I'm just people saying people can have a good time without hooking up with strangers. But that's it's part of thing. the human nature, though. I'm sorry, it's that part you of don't the human race. That way. It's part of the human race is having sexual relations. But my sexual drive is not as high as yours, then. And I'm confident, uh, and I'm fine with it. Well, that's it just that's just human nature, as far as men and women, <laughs> you know. It, what's the saying? Men are from Mars, women are from Uranus? Or is it the other way around? He's discriminating. <laughs> no, Fair not housing. at all. I'm the most diverse person you will ever know. No, but, um, but yeah, because men, uh, a man's buildup, a man's DNA, is, his genetic makeup is to oh, reproduce yeah. and provide. Yeah. That's it. That's, yeah. that's what men do. That's what we're put on earth for. Um, I now, do have I do have a quiver of three kids. It's plenty. Yeah, and I'm not saying that, that we haven't evolved, but 
as far back as time goes, from the caveman days to now, men have a higher sexual drive because we're put on this planet to reproduce. That's why we produce millions of sperm. But women have the babies. I feel like there should be a little more in for it for the women mm. to to want it. The sex isn't just... that good. Sorry, guys. No like, shit. I mean... Now we're getting crazy. <laughs> I mean, what Wait. do you get out of it? Like two minutes of... I'm doing yoga and having have fun hope. with Netflix. And then, you know, that or I'm like, eh, been there, done that. Wait, what is on Netflix that you're having fun with? <laughs> the Great British Bake Off. Because I want to watch this. I'm currently finishing <laughs> up um, Handmaid's Tale, re-watching The Walking Dead, but I feel like I'm getting violent in nature, so I've put that on pause for a second. <laughs> oh, my God. What season are you on? <laughs> well, I've watched, I've watched it all, and then oh. I'm, like, re-watching it again on oh. season five. And I, it just, okay. But I feel like I'm, I did throw a whole Tupperware of lima beans at my son the other day, and I was like, good. But Wait a second. Why would one throw a tub of lima beans? Lima beans are gross. They's, that's that's the, the, first the greatest thing bean that I on the planet. It's not. It is. It's not. Lima I've beans got are two bags so of lima beans gross. in my freezer right and now. And they've too. been there for as long as you've lived in this house. Because lima beans, when you freeze them, they make good ice packs. Like if you've oh, got yeah. It. So they're not round. Good oh, to yeah. eat. They're oval and round, and they like. They're delicious together. to eat. Yeah. As a vegan, I'm shocked you don't like. I, butter beans are lima beans. How how I can be vegan and hate oh. lima beans. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're I'm like, you can be a carnivore and hate turkey bacon. Not at all. I love it. I'm just, I'm, 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 it's an example. I sacrificed the lima beans on the floor. Yeah. My son just made me mad. And you threw lima beans. I and mean, I was like, ooh, I need to like, cut back on Walking Dead because, like, ooh. How old are your kids? So I have a 15-year-old um, who is just finishing up with ninth grade mm-hmm. and a 13-year-old daughter. Those two are half Polynesian. So talking about, um, you know, filling out the, the race form, right? Mm-hmm. Um, get it from the, you know, the school district produces the, the ethnicity, right? Yeah. Breakdown. I have the only two Polynesian kids in Johnson County. Two. The number says two. I'm like, yeah, those two are mine. Um, and then I have what I call my little white baby. She's so cute. Yeah. And she's mm-hmm. nine. Yeah. She's my kids can circle like the Hispanic or the white block. Yeah. On theirs. Well, so. I just, I don't like how it's um, frowned upon or not applicable to, to, to mark both because your kids are both. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> I mean, it's same weird. thing with your kids. They, they can't be. Uh, South Asian, Pacific Islander, right. and white. Right. I just wish we would get to a point in society where we can just get away with these check marks. You know, well, that, we're truly uh, we're truly a melting pot. I mean, mm-hmm. really. So it's we're pretty mixed, and a lot of people that are my friends don't even know what they are. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. what if you truly don't mm-hmm. even know what race you are? Like. I think that your race shouldn't be a criteria that you're judged by, no matter where you're going to school, whether you're going to work. And I think we're all a part of the human race. Right. You, you didn't know? choose your parents. I yeah. Mean, like, I mean, you and are you who you are. sometimes know who they actually are. And I think yeah. the only criteria, if you want to do that, is, is like male and female. But now you can't even do that now because you don't even just know who's who now, you know. Take a girl on a date, you fill her up. Oh my God, what is that down there? Well, then you start running. You oh yeah. If you're making an argument for <laughs> why are there so many races and we are not inclusive of all of them, I, I feel huh. like you need to adopt to the same mentality around gender too, because mm-hmm. there's n- there's not just two genders, <laughs> and why can't we be more? Why can't we be more inclusive of of what everybody identifies it's a surprise as. factor that's that's throwing people off yeah you and don't i want, think you don't want to think one thing just because you think it and then you're like oh shoot that's not a dog it's a cat i mean you, yeah it's a surprise factor i mean if you're on one of these dating apps and you see a girl and they don't have their transgender well, okay let's just be real most guys don't read that the bios we look at the pictures and she's a pretty girl yeah, visual. swipe right 
You know, yeah, we are visual creatures. All right. So you go out on a date with this person, and then it gets to the point where, you know, okay, she's hot, but then she still got the man tool. And you freak out. Okay. And you run away and you cuss her out and blah, blah. You you can't, like, throw on that guy, oh, you're a bigot. You're, you hate transgenders. Okay. But you know, you, you can't do that. It's not fair to the guy. Okay, yeah, don't do that. There is a way. You show up to this date. She's hot, but she has a penis. You can say, oh, you know, you're really pretty, but I don't like that. But if and I wanted you to... leave. You thank her for your time, and yeah. you leave. You don't punch her. You don't kill her. No, you don't do that. I'm not oh, saying right. you do but that, but you can't, you can't blame a guy for overreacting nonviolently. Like saying, what the fuck? You know, I, I just bought I, you dinner. I can blame a guy. <laughs> I can blame a guy. I, I don't know. I just see this completely different. I mean, if I wanted a penis, I would swipe with the gay men. I mean, that's just my my 411. Yeah, what you ask for should be delivered. Yeah. Yeah. All I, right. I can see both sides. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, it's a real touchy like topic but i don't know like in delaware i read this uh article from the fastest woman in delaware she's in high school or no or was it college i can't remember but it was an article i read this morning where she was talking about how she was the fastest until these transgender athletes started to compete with her and then they took all her records and uh, you know and i don't think that's right that's why they have men and women's sports so, so yeah. yeah, I actually yeah. am the president of the Clayton women's rugby team, mm-hmm. and and there I have played rugby, right, with a transgender, and it's it's freaking unfair, man. Yeah, taking you down to the ground, I mean, like plummeting you. So, down who to the are funding and creating the sports teams and sectors for tra- transgenders? Who are creating the teams? Yeah. Somebody's going to have to. Exactly. I mean, you look at it's me. It's got to be fair. Well, look at me. I wake up one morning, and I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm a girl on the inside. And then I go, and I become and a transgender. that's exactly how it works. But uh, you never know. That That's how it does work for a lot of these people. They have a uh, sexual dysphoria, isn't that the term for it? Uh, no, yes, gender dysphoria. But it, ju- it doesn't happen and, um, overnight, is what I'm saying. Eh. Like this is a lifetime of a lot of internal uncertainty before diagnosing. Maybe that's what's happening to me since I haven't been dating recently. You turn into a I guy. Mean, I mean, you <laughs> never know. <laughs> You, can't, you know, asexuality is a thing, too. You're allowed to not want to have sex. Right. And this one can't Look. wrap his head around that. Look. You're allowed to not want it. And that's beautiful that we're all, I mean, everybody can be different. And that's what's beautiful. And that we can laugh about it. That's what's, yeah. that's what's great. But it's, it, it's not fair. I'm not going to get off this subject. Hold on. Uh-oh. But it's not fair because <laughs> men are built different. Our genetics, our bone structure, our muscle structure the, except for you have man burps. <laughs> That's just not even right. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it's not fair. Uh, there's a physical advantage to men playing sports against women. If LeBron James decided he was a woman, he could go to the WNBA and average 100 points a game, 85 blocks, 30 steals, and win the game by himself. I don't know. I feel like but a woman would absolutely fuck his shit up. Uh, you're delusional there. Yeah, I, I don't think so. LeBron is six foot eight, two hundred and seventy. The biggest woman in the WNBA might be like six six, six seven. I don't know. I don't watch WNBA. I don't watch the NBA. I'm just saying. I, I'm pretty sure though that's pretty accurate though. Our okay. bodies are definitely different. So yeah. that's yeah. what I'm saying. Is like. Somebody come to us and tell us Somebody. what you need in terms of these sports teams to make it right and to make it fair, so everybody can be involved without somebody like dying by accident. It's a, it's Transgender like sports force. will never be fair, though. It'll never be fair. I, I don't think so. I mean, I think we need to ask the transgender community. Unless, unless you have a biological female that transgendered over to a male, then I don't still don't think it's going to be fair because 
she'll have a harder obstacle or harder road ahead of her to compete. Man, we're getting deep up in this episode. Yeah. Ever. That's the thing is like, Man. I don't know. You don't know. Katie doesn't know no. because we are all cisgender at this table. So we're never going to understand sure. what what does that community want? What yeah. does that look like? And, you know, I would like to know so that these steps can be taken so that they are included in the activities that they want to be included in. Yeah. Cheers. On our way to Second get hammered. Beep, beep. Oh, wait. Beep. I'm not refilled. Your... Whoops. Wow. Oops. Run down. <laughs> I, it's okay. I got to steer the ship, so I don't okay. need anything okay. else. We're good. Um, steer the ship. Steer the ship. Yeah. Um, so, you know what? We have reached that point of the show where guess what time it is? Mm. It's quiz time. It's hammered trivia. Uh, uh, Are you uh, real? For a pink contest? God. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, hmm. You got a white claw. I don't know if I can... Uh, hold on. I am carbonated. I have to find my quiz. It disappeared. <clears throat> oh, my God. What happened here? Okay, this will be edited Ooh, out. So much for steering that <clears throat> ship, Capitan. <laughs> Steered it right into an iceberg. Titanic, the sequel. Do I get to smoke what? my vape for knowledge? Um, yeah, you Does can. Does that give you, you an unfair advantage? Well, we will find this shortly. It's, man, this was a good one. Where in the hell did it go? So, um, it. in the meantime, Katie, what a, what um, last little nuggets of wisdom <clears throat> do you have for potential home buyers and sellers in the triangle market right don't give up if you're a buyer don't give up keep trying just know that it's gonna take time there's you know five to twenty offers on homes be patient god will open up the door when it's your door and you're gonna hear a lot more no's than yeses be patient and keep trying don't give up and for sellers if you're even thinking about selling and, and fast tracking, maybe, you know, the retirement, uh, getting a beach house, going somewhere else, living in a camper, do it now. Do it now. You'll make more money. I mean, the net sheets that I send my sellers, and these are repeat clients that I just sold homes to five and six years ago. They're blown away by the amount of money. Can I... Circle back around. One more real estate thing. I started my own firm this past year, and I didn't even hit on that. <clears throat> um, totally off the wall. A, a, and, and I'm not going to mention any firm names in this discussion, but a, a group of friends and family, I have real estate family, um, and I decided to start a real estate firm that is run as a cooperative. So... We Ex explain what a cooperative is. Right? Is that? So yeah. that's like an old farm language, like cooperative, like um, run like a nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in the collective makes a decision together about everything, including finances. Okay? There's no money to be made by the firm. Totally, hmm. totally different than the big branded. Okay, so okay. the business that I get is referral only. Okay, you either love my personality or you hate it, right? The experience that I have and the referrals that I get are enough for the amount of work that I want to do. Okay, I don't need a big brand, you know, on my business card to back me for my real estate firm, right? So I started my own firm. There's no real estate commission splits. So the firm doesn't split with the agents. <clears throat> There's no unnecessary monthly fees. So it's completely different than, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, it's interesting. So that Alliance Real Estate <clears throat> Partners, that's all you. That, that That's your, and, your and, company. And some, uh, and, yeah, we're and equal, we'll equal shareholders. Without shares. Oh, there's, okay. There's no, there's no profit to be made by the firm. Well, good but for you. Congratulations. Because I don't that. have to give a big split mm -hmm. to a big brand. I'm not going to name any brands here. It's so competitive. <clears throat> I get to pass the savings on to my sellers. Okay. 
That's okay. a big deal. We'll leave it at that. That it took me a minute to kind of, <clears throat> I guess, kind of digest what I was hearing. But at the end of the day, it's better for everybody, everybody. involved. Yep. That's cool. So my expenses as a real estate agent are lock boxes, twenty dollars a pop, signs, a hundred dollars a pop. MLS fees, one fifty quarterly. Real tour fees, I don't even know. National, state, local, county, maybe seven hundred dollars a year. I can't even think of any other expenses that I have. The drive here, one full tank of gas <laughs> to promote your business. That is right. Takes a. Uh, I'm oh just man. trying well to. Worth I'm it. just trying yeah. to find a date on uh, ATV that or what? What? Yeah, ATV. ATV. Yeah. ATV, yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, no, after sorry. this, Ayers, you might. <laughs> after this, you might find a date on ATV. You're gonna have you to know? hire someone to scout your inbox for yes, you. That will be you. Look, no. so like Bobcat. <laughs> Bobcat did the podcast. Yeah. You know, he did the podcast. We talked about um, his wants uh, for a partner. You know, and. Uh, he we, found it right away. Well, we discussed him being single and what he had plans on doing, and like less than a week later, bam, he's in a relationship. And, She's sweet too. Yeah. She's um, sweet. Oh wow! I yeah. didn't know that. Congratulations. Yeah. It's the magic of hammered. Look at Michael Bird. The magic of hammered. Just bringing the world yeah. together, one happens. podcast at a time. Oh my God! Yeah. So this... I like the hippie type. Gotta love reggae. Like, let me go through the whole. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no. Go ahead. Go through <laughs> I your love bio. Reggae. Love reggae. Okay. Music. Love reggae music. Um. Love the hippie vibe. Yeah, not so much mm-hmm. the Joe. Co- Even though I live in Johnson County, not so much the country boy type. You don't like the Joko type? Ooh. No, that's Ooh. such a terio- stereotypical type of man yeah, out I there. Don't. What is the Joko type, I dare don't. I ask? Uh, yeah. You would have to ask. A Katie loud that. truck, country music, I shoot guns. Country boy. Just Country boy. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Say no more. I'm, yeah. I'm following. Okay. Okay. Um, are you so, really? F- oh, wait, whoa, 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 you got something else? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm still learning about Katie's dream dude here. Oh, okay. so how tall is he? What color is his hair? Does he have blue eyes? Long hair, mm-hmm. brown eyes, little bit of scrub, <laughs> just a little <laughs> bit of scrub. Precious. Yeah, definitely not a Joko guy. In because she's got describing the full beard. Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Hey, Scoob! <laughs> Ruh, roll. Was, Didn't the girls smoke weed though? Who what? On the shag on the Scooby Doo, the Velma and the did they smoke weed? Daphne they, they used smoked to... weed behind the van. Yes, what? that was like a whole part of the show. What? Well, well, was I this... feel like that's so <laughs> shaggy cartoon? and Scooby's thing because they were they always had the munchies. Hey, the girls Scoob, were smoking let's go with smoke them. some weed. I mean, it, it makes sense to me. Like, we'll just assume that the entire cast of Scooby Doo was fucking stoners. Yes, and that makes sense to me. I mean, they drove around in like a tie dye van. Um, it was tie dye. It, it, it was. It was it something blue looked, it had splatters. and green, and it said "Mystery Machine" in orange on the it side. It was hippie as hell. And <laughs> that van had clouds of smoke in it, like. Okay. Thicker than Hiroshima. Well, Scooby Doo was created oh. in the seventies. Like someone dreamed that up at Woodstock. How many times do you think Shaggy fucked Daphne? They were all having orgies in that van. Daphne Shaggy was not Daphne's type. No, it was Velma. Velma yeah. was, yeah. Oh, they had orgies. It was the seventies. They were in a hippie van. Come on. They were smoking pot. They had some good nights in that all van. Right. Did you find your trivia? I found it. I've been I've been waiting on you. <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just making sure that the eligible bachelors out there who meet Katie's needs are yeah. are hearing. And let me check my calendar. They... I'm gonna go ahead and let you know, dude. When so we're guys, going on a date. if you Hold got on. a dog named Scoob and uh, you, <laughs> you have a are van, in. you're definitely <laughs> in. You are smoke in. a little weed. How about edibles? You like the edibles? Yes. Use some edibles too. <laughs> Perfect. You know, just yeah, you know where. Hit up Katie. You can email her <laughs> right here. You see her email re- address. It's right here. Keys from Katie Spaulding. Okay. I'm just going to uh, I don't know if that means the keys here. to her heart. It's the keys to the house you're buying. <laughs> I'm just going to. Take two for right? 
going to say, please don't email <laughs> Katie's professional email. I don't think you'll get a response back. Well, it's too way. late because it's all it's plastered all over this podcast. <laughs> anyway, well, the type of people that listen to this podcast probably um, are going to blow her inbox up. All four people. So all just keep an five. eye out for them. Five. Um, okay, here we go. Okay. It's that time. Let redo. Here we go. Every time I say it's time for trivia, we always talk about something else and we end up coming back. But this one is uh, not themed on anything we talked about. This is just something I was like, I need a trivia quick. So, Katie, the way this, uh, have you listened to quiz uh, Hammered Trivia on uh, Hammered before? I don't remember it. Okay, so the way this works is there are six questions. You're going to get three, and Laura's going to get three. Whoever answers the most questions correctly wins trivia. Now, if after the sixth question is uh, read and answered, if you tie, we go into overtime. The overtime question, question seven. Thank you. You already saw it. I'm not a cheater. Oh, my God. We'll see. I think I should I mix them up I now. I don't even have my glasses on. Even if I were trying well, to cheat, I can't see what's happening. Okay. I believe you. So here's what we're going to do. Since you are our guest, okay. you will get the first question. Thank you. Katie Spaulding. First question. Uh, what company uses the slogan, mm-mm, good? Is it Oreos, Campbell's, Sunsweet, or Swiffer? Campbell. We have a winner. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Katie is up one to zero. All right, Laura, are you ready for question number two? I am. What company uses the slogan, add some rue to your do? Is it Pantene, Pert, Aussie, or Mr. Clean? Aussie. That is correct. What is Aussie anyway? What is that? It's a hair care <clears throat> brand out of Australia. So the, the rue is a reference to a kangaroo, mm. and your do is your hair do. I see what you did there. It's a purple okay. bottle. It's actually pretty good. Damn, she knows the color of the bottle. Oh, my God. They test on animals. Don't use them. Oh, shoot. On kangaroos? I mean, in Australia, they'll test on anything that's not going to kill them first. Test on so. for koala bears? No. Okay. All right. Well, we're tied. One to one. All right. All right so, go. moving on, we've got Katie. She's in the batter's box. Will she come out swinging and hit a homer, or will she go back with a strikeout? Here we go. It seems like McDonald's is always changing its slogan. Oh, I hate McDonald's. Oh, which of these has never been a McDonald's slogan? Okay. Be McHappy. We love to see you smile. I'm loving it. Did somebody say McDonald's? Oh, this is so hard. Read the answers one more time. Oh, one more time. We've got, is it B. McHappy? We love to see you smile. I'm loving it. Did somebody say McDonald's? Which of those has not been a McDonald's slogan? I'm loving it. That's actually the one slogan I remember. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> really. That's yeah. like their most I popular feel like that's one. Their most recent yeah. one. Yeah. Um, oh shit! The I don't was, have cable. And can I guess? Sure. Yeah. Be Mick Happy. That was actually uh, the correct answer. Oh, nice. Okay. That should have been your question. It should have been my question. I would have thought it was. We love to McDonald's see you smile. Like a thousand years. I oh. feel like that was a jingle though. Like we love to see you smile. Like. The last thing you're doing when you eat McDonald's is smiling. You're thinking about all the fat you just put on your body and how it's well, going to feel five hours later when you're the problem, streaming diarrhea out your ass. Yeah. Obesity is an <laughs> epidemic in America because nobody is thinking about that. <laughs> okay, so um, Katie does not add to her um, points. Don't so we're still one-to-one. One. One. Going into question four, um, complete this Pillsbury slogan. My blank... To yours. My, this sounds like a weird game that we play, like Cards Against Humanity or something like that. Um, <laughs> complete this Pillsbury slogan, my blank to yours. Smile, oven, laugh, or heart? I'm going to say heart. Oh, my God. Laura is winning. Two to one. Look at Laura putting up points. My heart to yours. 
Did they have yeah. a Did they have a jingle? I, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Pills back. I mean, that was just a very convincing jingle from Katie, so I just assumed she had I heard it. Thought she was going to sing it for us. I mean, you can if you ever if you want to sing anything on the show, just My feel heart. right in. I, mean, I just yeah. That's I just it. Met is you tonight, and I'm feeling love. <laughs> <laughs> and I get to see you on Friday. It's mutual. Oh, my God. No, it's Stephanie and her like bonded just like this, too. It was crazy. And he's jealous about it. It's I crazy. wouldn't say I'm not jealous at all. No. <clears throat> you're, you're doing your job as the co-host. You are um, go, whatever your job is. She's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Somebody recognizes. Okay. Here we go. Oh, one of my favorite women of all time right here. Thank uh, you. Which is the real slogan of Sarah Lee? Sarah Lee, thank I you I used very to much. eat that with the butter crust. Oh, my the God. The butter this, crust. Oh, my God. My no, there's the, the cheesecake uh, danishes, the cheese yes, danishes. Yes, oh, my God. Yes, they're yes, the yes. Best. My mom made those. Oh. Yes. They weren't Sarah Lee then. Stick them in the oven. I'm, I'm pretty sure your moms were great, but Sarah Lee's is the best. They make a streusel. A, a okay. streusel? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Wait, I, now I'm hungry. And oh. cheesecake. Okay, who's this for? Katie? Is this Katie? It, it is me. Katie's, yes. Oh, okay. Which is the real slogan of Sarah Lee? Everybody likes Sarah Lee. Nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. Everybody loves Sarah Lee. Everybody fucked Sarah Lee. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I kind of added that one in. Of course. <laughs> oh, it's getting it's getting okay. serious. Can Katie's sing, like writing I down. I need you to sing these for me, please. Go ahead. I wouldn't even know <laughs> where to begin. I, I don't know Everybody the jingles. Everybody loves Sarah Lee. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good enough. Everybody no. likes Sarah Lee. Nobody <laughs> likes Sarah Lee. <laughs> British. <laughs> Who wants to fuck Sarah Lee? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> fucks Sarah Lee. Yeah. Nobody doesn't like Sarah oh. Lee. That girl How pussy about? tastes like cheesecake. <laughs> oh, shit. Love it. Blueberry strawberry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh what my. happened? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I like it though. Okay. <laughs> How about? I think she's everybody a loves Sarah Lee. My final answer. Oh no! Oh, it's wrong. Oh. Nobody doesn't Nobody like doesn't Sarah Lee. Nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. That's yes. the truth of it, though. So okay. we're still tied, right? One no, one. that means I won. Oh no, no Laura no. wins. Yes. Brought one home for the home Wait team. a minute. Wait a minute. There was how many questions? There was six, but <laughs> you, you don't have to, enough left. I can't make it up. Yep. Yeah, you can't make you it up. You had to have gotten Sarah Lee right in order to move but, into. <laughs> Just ask us one more. But we will. We'll go to go um, to Laura's question. You both can work on this one together. Um, complete the slogan. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe, Maybe it's, it's Maybelline. That was too easy. Aww. Okay, let's move on. Complete this slogan. The snack that smiles back. Goldfish. Jesus, Laura's a, a freaking genius when it comes to these slogans. She reads All labels. Right. <laughs> Complete this slogan. Hidden Valley Ranch. The way ranch. Was should, meant to taste. Should be. Ooh. Yeah. So Laura was closer. Okay, so what is You it? got two words, right? Uh, it's supposed to taste. Hidden Valley. Oh, okay. It's supposed no. to taste. According to their slogan, what brand of peanut butter do choosy moms choose? Jif. Jif. Gee, I would not know that. Which weight loss program uses the slogan, stop dieting, start living? Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers? Double winners right there. <laughs> well, there I we mean, go. That's Hammer Trivia. Laura is the winner. Said it first. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty uh, pleased with how Hammer Trivia went. So Laura with the win. Amazed. Like, I retain to zoning out on my commute. Uh, like, I don't think I'm hearing the radio commercials, but evidently I am. Yes. Uh, it's radio I thought commercials. I was completely disassociating. But There's one radio I'm, commercial. I'm hearing it all. One radio commercial that I cannot get out of my head every time I hear it. ARS Rescue ARS and Rescue Rooter. That's the kind of country I'm talking about that I don't want. Just like... <laughs> That's the kind of country uh, that nobody wants. <laughs> exactly. Mm. And then every time there's that Indeed, that company Indeed, 
I, I don't know what they do, but they are always well, on the radio. Every time they say, com. it's a job yeah. board. Job, yeah. Okay. Every time that that comes on, Some of us I have, have to say, to look for jobs in the last fifteen years. <laughs> well, I have not been one of those. I so know. I, I don't know. I just know Indeed has a lot of commercials on the radio, and every time it comes on, it's just like automatic in my brain. I go, Indeed. Makes you me, feel like a man, I just, though. I, I, I do. Like, I, a man. like, I'm in the car by myself, and Indeed will come on. They'll go, Indeed.com, and I go, Indeed, every time. It's just like an automatic tick in my brain. It's I don't. It's weird. I know. It's the Diamonds Direct radio ad for me, where I'm just mm. like, shut the fuck up, man. Especially the one that's like, what if you bought your wife a $5,000 diamond last year, but now she wants a $6,000 diamond? Get a new fucking wife. God, yeah, that's... Exactly. Uh, Definitely. God almighty, <laughs> what does a $5,000 diamond look like? Like, I, I can't fathom. And I, I consider myself, honestly, very educated in, in diamonds and gemstones. I think more so than, like, the average female who's never worked in jewelry. But I can't picture what a $5,000 diamond looks like. How many carats is that? <clears throat> well, What's it's got to be small. on that? $5,000 isn't that much for a diamond. Um, I mean, to us it is. I'm just saying a lot of people, I mean, come on, like million dollar diamonds. You've seen those, right? Like the, the A-Rod and the J-Lo diamonds, and even though they're split up now. Well, you but. know, like a lot goes into the pricing of a diamond. You know, you can get a large diamond. You can get like a four carat diamond and it can only be like eight grand. But the, the color isn't ideal. It's included like... There, there's a lot wrong with it. So, you know, we, for a $5,000 diamond, I don't know, it can be one carat, but it can be GIA certified perfect. Can I, can okay. I, can I drop some truth? Yes. Drop it. So, so I have a, I have a family lineage of jewelers. Okay. Oh. In fact, um, my grandfather was Jewish. Name is Oppenheimer. Right, which they're the ones that mined the diamonds. Okay, Jewish though, but when they came to America, they changed their last name to Ogden. Okay, oh. people put the price on diamonds at whatever price they chose. Exactly. There's a surplus of diamonds. Oh yeah, it's you ridiculous. can make them in a lab for it's ten cents, but because if a guy of... gives me a diamond to show me he loves me, fuck you, motherfucker, you don't know what love is. Yeah, just saying, Jared. It's it's the marketing. That's Jared around <laughs> diamonds and the diamond industry so, that's made it. It's so like, oh, I got a big diamond on my hand. Like I can't stand that shit. <clears throat> okay, well, agreed. Agreed. I don't know. I've never had a diamond. I'm good. I don't need oh, a diamond on my don't finger. Don't waste your money, baby. Nobody needs a diamond. I don't know. I like diamonds. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't want a diamond, but well, I, I feel like my alleged, you know, invest in real estate. Don't invest in diamonds. Would not know me very well if they got me a diamond. <laughs> well, hopefully after this podcast, Katie's going to find a guy in ATB that's going to slap a nice old, <laughs> like, five-figure diamond on her finger. It's going to be the size of a lima bean. That's right. Yeah. That's a big diamond. A diamond the size of a lima bean is at least a million dollars. I mean, I'd say that's a, a rough four carats. Mm. I'll sell it and buy real estate. Mm. Promise you. Well, you're not going to get anything for the <laughs> diamond because diamonds have no resale value. Wait, oh. what? Diamonds have no resale value. So why in all these movies you always see like people with diamonds in their safe? Oh, like the one movie we watched. Uh, I don't know, because there is no money in selling diamonds. It's gold. What was that movie we watched with Peter Dinklage and, you know, Peter Dinklage, the dwarf from yeah, Game of I, Thrones? I know, like a heist I know type movie who or Peter something. Dinklage is. Uh, yes. So the movie's premise was this woman, she was a con artist, and she would put these old people in rest homes and <gasps> take over their yes, I've seen um, that. their assets. Yes. Yes, and she yes, did yes. that to the wrong person. Like, Peter Dinklage was a mafia boss or something. And they put his mom in the rest home and locked her away. He was like, no, nah, this ain't happening. So then this woman turned out to be, 
like lesbian cuntosaurus rex uh-huh. like uh-huh. she would not take no for an answer she went head to head with peter dinklage and uh-huh. you know not to give the movie away but it was a great movie but yeah i have no memory of this you watched that with someone else no we did this on uh the, the plex we watched it together i thought we did not yeah that was someone else no 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 we did not watch it we totally watched this movie we did not. She kept going before right. the court to like say, "Oh, this person's mentally ill. I need to take care of them." That person, that one. Yeah, yeah, she that kept was going it. before the judge, yeah. and she was like, "Yep, yeah, sorry, family. Your your mother is not able to care for herself. Yeah, I'm gonna take her in. Yeah, yeah, care for her." And the crooked judge would be like, "Yep, yeah, she's in your care now." Yeah, they were all and in bed. And then she would have access to like all her finances and. Well, a, you need to watch that it. That was a series. Totally that funny. wasn't a movie. That, no. I think that was a series. No, was you're wrong. Movie? You're wrong. Am I wrong? Then I fell asleep like halfway uh, through thinking it was, find, there was on. more and I never watched the more. It was. That's pretty uh, typical. It had like a weird name to it, too. Um, oh, I don't know. What was the lady's name? Look it up. What was the lady's name? She was like so diplomatic. Like I'm trying to think of. Oh, she was like a strong who that woman. Was. Yeah. yeah, that's who I want to be in real estate one day. She was a Pisces. I'm getting there. You're there. Um, you got it. <laughs> I am looking this up. Uh, What's her name? I'm trying to remember. God, it's got. I care a lot. That was the name of the movie. I care a lot. Oh. Her name was Rosamund Pike. I'm not. That was her. her. Okay, she was amazing. She was the perfect. Yeah, character. Peter Dinklage was the only known actor in that movie that I could uh, think of. So anyway, so. long story short, diamonds have no resale value. If you're going to hold up a jewelry store, don't take the diamonds because you're not going to get anything back for it. You want the gold. The gold is hot market right now. Um, sell the gold, buy a plot of land, invest in that. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. All righty then. Mm-hmm. Keep like heirloom diamonds. Like those have at least sentimental value. You can make that into a lovely piece that you can wear and pass on. Um, there's no point selling it. You won't get anything. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I don't know. Hey, hey, okay. So that's that. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Hammered Kids. Hope you enjoyed the show and you learned a lot. <laughs> Fuck Jared. <laughs> 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 All right. Hey, before we go, have you got anything you want to put out, Katie? If somebody wants to your services, where are they going to go? I'm so good. You can um, find me. You don't even need to know my. I mean, like, I'm going to have some fun. Check me out. You can find me. Actually, uh, you know what? Talk, right. Talking about that, I do, I do make up a list of everywhere that's hot and fun to be, and I publish it on Facebook and Instagram every week. Of where of, of of the options of where I'm going to be every week, on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Go. Well, what, what's like your a uh, whole sheet? Like wine on Main, revival, and still. I love Clayton. Okay. I love Clayton. I support Clayton. So. So you're on Facebook. So guys, if you look like Shaggy, you got a van with like green and splotches. You got a dog named Scoob, and you like smoke some weed, and you consider yourself a hippie. Look up Katie Spalding on Facebook. She's also got an IG, Instagram. What's your Instagram? Do you know it? Keys from Katie. Keys from Katie. There you go. All right. Well, Katie, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. I hope you had a good time. Um, Laura, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. This has been another episode of Hammer. I'm Mike, and we'll see you next time. Hey, Michael. Peace. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. You're welcome. No one ever thanks you. Thank you. I mean, I have to be on the show. We love you. It's a thankless job. Thank you. Well, I'm literally (laughs) thanking you. Well, thank you. I appreciate (laughs) it. We're out. All right, bye. Bye Bye-bye.